Nigeria's experience is worst flood ever. According to the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, over 1.3 million people have been internally displaced, 600 lives lost, and over 200,000 homes destroyed. And that's not all. 370 local governments across the 36 states of Nigeria has been highly affected, with over 108,000 hectares of farmland partially destroyed and a whopping 300,000 completely wiped out. A couple school of thoughts allude this to climate change effects, whilst others feel this as a result of poor infrastructure to contain the water inflow from Cameroon. Either ways, the effects are not palatable. Hello everyone, welcome to Kinomics. My name is Maria Afemike. But why is the dam at Cameroon causing so much flood in Nigeria yearly? Well, a quick blast into the past revealed that sometimes in 1977, the Cameroonian and Nigerian government reached an agreement to individually build a dam. The Labdo Dam at Cameroon and the Darsin Hausa Dam at Adamawa, Nigeria. The Darsin Hausa Dam was supposed to be two and a half the size of Labdo Dam for three key reasons. To contain the water inflows from Labdo, generate electricity for Nigeria, and to serve as irrigation for over 150,000 hectares of land in Adamawa, Taraba, and Burnley states. The Cameroonian government kept their pact to the agreement, but the Darsin Aosa Dam never saw full fusion. But why is this a big deal for Nigeria? Well, yearly, when the Lagoon Dam is released, Nigeria feels negative effect through flood. And this year's flood was extremely overwhelming because of heavy wind and rainfall at Cameroon. Yet another climate change effect, right? Well, this has become a nightmare for Nigerians. And trust me, the economic consequences will be felt largely through spike in inflation, increase in internal displaced people, destruction of existing housing and road infrastructure, and disruption in domestic supply chains. Christmas, as you know it, will not be the same this year as major food producing states from Adamawa to Benue, Kogi, amongst others, are already counting losses in destruction of farmland and submission of houses. And guess what this means in real terms? Spike in food and energy prices. Rice, a major staple in Nigeria, is already experiencing price pressures, and the cost of cooking gas is also towing same routes. The health effect is also staring at our faces. Over 7,500 cases of cholera has been recorded in northeastern Nigeria. That's according to the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF. These are a few consequences amongst others. But what can businesses and households do amidst consequences? Well, the conventional advice is to front load and buy ahead. But how is this even possible when inflation is increasing without a corresponding increase in income, wages, and salaries? So I'd say, first, improving your financial decisions will help channel your finances to best use amid negative consequences. This also applies to your business finance, from prioritizing spending to tracking and measuring your budgets. Moving forward, farmers need to be more conversant with climate-related risk and its impact on crop production. Therefore, farmers can individually and collectively, as a cooperative, assess financial products such as insurance, which help mitigate and manage climate-related exposures. They can also enter into favorable trade deals with off-takers that can help adapt to climate uncertainties. These discussions can be better made with your financial partners and bankers. As I empathize with those who have lost valuables, investment, and loved ones, I hope this piece helps you make informed decisions. For more inquiries and engagements on our financial products and banking solutions, kindly find details below. Watch out for more insight on Kinomis. Bye.